so this is uh, lecture 28 okay and uh, we are looking at uh, we are looking at equalizers okay so we've been looking at various types of equalizers I'm, I'm going to do a brief summary before we proceed i think we were at some point i'll come back to it quickly but i, I want to just briefly uh, rehash a few things okay so so we're, we're looking at several see there are several angles at which you can approach equalizers in fact there are much more than what i'm going to do okay i can only hint at some of the possibilities so the basic signal processing problem is signals corresponding to different symbols are going to add linearly combine and add to noise then you're going to receive it okay so that's fundamentally the problem so what do you do with that is the question and uh, there is one optimal thing to do okay that optimal thing turns out to be not implementable if the channel has a pole for instance okay so this is really a bit of an issue because in several cases you might have that problem so so since that is not implementable we're dealing with a lot of suboptimal structures okay so there are lots of ways of doing suboptimal structures okay right but that should be clear to you from whatever you have learned so far okay, the optimal thing is just one usually and then once you come suboptimal there are millions of possibilities and after you go out of this course if at all you try to implement some equalization you'll see you'll be doing something else which is suboptimal okay and suboptimal will involve a lot of approximations the intuition will come based on lots of approximations right and ultimately you'll just make an implementation and try it and see how well it works okay so that's how the final final goal or performance will be judged okay so some things to keep in mind okay one of the crucial things to keep in mind is to look at the slicer input okay so that's a crucial crucial thing which, which is common to many of these equalizer designs okay so ultimately after you do some processing to the signal finally you're going to slice and see the slicer input and look at the signal component plus the noise component okay and do all your processing based on that okay so that seems to be like one common thread in most of this linear equalizers dfes and all that okay so you look at the slicer input and you focus your attention on the slicer input i want a certain characteristic at the input to my slicer okay so first thing we thought was right signal contains two part right two parts the valid signal and isi okay isi plus the valid 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 symbol okay so in fact the input to the slicer you have three different components a contribution from sk which is your symbol of interest then contributions from sk plus or minus 1 sk plus or minus 2 and all that those contributions and then you have noise okay and you can do signal processing you can condition your signal in several different ways to try and reduce or increase different parts of this these three parts okay so the first idea is to do what's called zero forcing okay so okay before before all that the first thing is to decide what what kind of processing you want to do okay so one processing that immediately suggests itself is filtering right so you're, you're getting a certain symbol rate samples okay right so our, our general model was sk is going through some hz and noise is getting added okay so the noise psd we assumed is some sn right and then what you do with the zk is the question okay so the first model is to put some filter there okay so that seems like the most obvious thing to do so you want to put a filter there so the question is how do you decide that filter so where do you go for that you go to the slicer again is right so you do you do a lot of things here you might do a lot of things okay but finally you're going to have a slicer right and the slicer input really captures every property that you want to use in designing the signal processing okay so that's the first thing so the first simplest thing to do is to not worry about worry only about isi at the slicer input and say i want to drive that isi to zero okay so you do a linear equalizer to drive that isi to zero but in the process what have you done you have increased noise so you might say why don't you do the filtering only for the symbol only for the signal okay so that is not possible so that's the fundamental problem right so noise and signal have somehow added and you have to work with the sum and there's no way of separating it out okay so that's so keep that in mind i'm saying no way of separating out accurately okay at the input to your processing so you have whatever processing you do you're going to do for both 
ISI and noise. So that's the problem. You thought you're removing the ISI, but in fact, you're working on the noise also, and noise is getting enhanced. Okay, so that is the problem. So, so how do you deal with that problem? How do you try to remove the ISI from the noise? Is the central is, is the next question, right? So if you want to get rid of the noise enhancement, you have to somehow get rid of noise and keep the signal. Okay, so if you look carefully at the receiver, which part is doing that for you? Which part is throwing away the noise and retaining the signal? Slicer. slicer, okay. So while you looked at the slicer input, the slicer is also doing a good job for you. It's somehow getting rid of the noise and giving you just the signal, okay. So now if you assume the slicer output is accurate, you can process the signal separately and the noisy signal separately in your receiver. Okay, assuming your slicer output is accurate. Okay, so that's where this feedback comes in. Okay, so in essence, feedback plays such a central role in almost any signal processing or electrical engineering application is because it somehow removes that error and gives you the signal to play with. Okay, and then you play with that signal and play around with it and see what else you can do with it. So that's how the suboptimal, that's the kind of the philosophy of all these suboptimal equalizers. Okay, so you have signal plus noise coming in. You can do some filtering to it, but that's not good enough because you're constrained to filter both signal and noise, right? You're worried about the slicer, but the slicer is doing a good job of removing that noise for you. And so you take the output of the slicer and play around with it. You can do better. Okay, so that's the overall philosophy. And you'll see as we go along, we'll play this game in various ways. Okay, so the structures will change and we'll play around. So almost always we'll be guided by the slicer input and also the slicer output. Okay, whenever we desire to process the signal alone, we will go to the slicer output and whenever we want some constraint for designing the uh, this this part you look at the slicer input okay so those that's that's philosophy i think hopefully you, you see where all it's, this is coming from okay so it's important to do that and the next thing that one needs to keep track of is the mean squared error okay so where did that come from was the question okay so of, of course the ultimate goal is to minimize probability of error but the probability of error is a difficult expression. It's a nonlinear expression, number one. Number two, it cannot be computed in a decision directed fashion very nicely at the receiver. Okay, in the training mode, you can nicely compute it, but it can quickly become bad if you're doing completely decision directed because, well, there are ways to overcome those problems. But anyway, if you're doing completely decision directed, then you can go wrong, right? So you go wrong, you continue to go wrong. This, there can be problem. On the other hand, mean square error seems like such a clean way of characterizing any problem. Okay. Sorry. Well, let's forget about it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, probability of error is a tough thing to deal with. The only thing we can deal with is mean square error, right? See, look at the slicer input. It's got ISI. It's got valid symbol. It's got noise. If it did not have ISI, yeah, we can deal with probability of error. If it has ISI, then probability of error becomes more complicated. You have to worry about propagation and all these things. Okay. So you don't you don't worry about all that and only look at mean square error. Okay. So maybe it's some suboptimal thing. Okay. But strangely enough, what people have shown is, if you do mean square error, mean square error, you can reach capacity. Okay, so capacity is the best you can do. Okay, so now that people have shown that mean square error becomes a very definite, valid criteria. Okay, so of course in this course I won't show you how that works. Okay, but people have shown that mean square error, looking at mean square error, is a very good criterion in the sense that it can be capacity achieving. Okay, so it's it's optimal in that way. Okay, it's not immediately clear how it can be optimal, but it's optimal in that way as in it can achieve capacity. Okay, so all these things are motivations for why mean square error is a good criteria, and we will look at mean square error at the slicer input between the slicer input and the slicer output as far as the receiver is concerned. But in the theoretically, how do you define mean square error? You define error as slicer input minus minus SK. Right? This is this was my error symbol and mean square error is mean of square of this. Okay, so all these things are see all these things are fairly new to you, all these terms are fairly new to you, but but hopefully you see ultimately you're not doing anything that is very great or fundamental here. Okay, so it's just a nice nice way of doing the signal processing and uh, most of it is intuition, simply motivated. But the deeper meaning is mean square error is much more is justifiable at a much more fundamental way from a capacity point of view. Okay, so that is the I'm just telling you that. Take it on faith. Maybe if you're interested, I can give you references for reading up more on that. Okay, so that's the story. Okay, so let's proceed with what we were doing. So we were looking at the the MMSE 
okay mmsc linear equalizer okay so we were trying to design that linear equalizer which will minimize the mean square error at the input of the slicer okay so i had an expression for it the first expression i had well let me remind you what the structure was this case h of z we are not assuming this is monic minimum phase and all anymore just taking it to be a general general filter general filter h of z then nk once again is a general uh, noise process gaussian but with some arbitrary psd i want to design a filter here which i called d of z and then i want to do a slicer okay this is my uh, zero forcing equalizer i'm sure i called this zk this xk this is s hat k okay so my ek became xk minus sk and then carefully writing out all the filtering and all that i was able to show that the power spectral density for e is going to be what es multiplied by ht minus 1 squared plus what sn multiplied by mod d squared okay so this is what i was able to show okay so this this is actually a function of you can imagine e pa j theta on the unit circle okay so that's how this power spectral density works it's non negative real okay and my msc is what mean square error is how is it related to sc yeah the arithmetic mean of sc okay so it's all real and non negative it's the arithmetic mean so if i minimize sc at each point theta i would have minimized my mean square error as well okay so that's the first step the next step is to recognize that sc has been written as the sum of two squares so whenever you want to minimize sum of two squares the useful trick is to complete squares and then see the remainder okay and your and the variable you desire should be inside the square okay so then you know how to drive that square term to zero and whatever is remaining is has to be the minimum case okay so i said you can try it if you do all that you will get the expression that i gave you in last class so let me let me see where that expression is here it is okay so the expression is in terms of sc okay so it worked out as sc times mod d minus es sc inverse h star square plus es sn sc inverse okay this is what it worked out to be and that's a nice form in which we completed the square and sc is what the power spectral density of z which is easy to come up with es mod h square plus sn okay so in terms of this i was able to complete squares okay so a nice exercise is to show that these two expressions are exactly the same okay so it's a simple algebraic exercise but it might give you some lessons in how to play around with these complex variables so basically you're trying to complete squares in complex uh, domain also okay so this is what we got so from here it's very clear how to minimize the mean square error or how to minimize se the power spectral density of the error at every point okay so you simply choose d to be what es h star divided by sc so i'll write it in the full form mod h square plus s okay so that is my d and what will be my mmsc as in the minimum mean square error it's going to be the arithmetic mean of es sn okay so let me write it in the complete form sn divided by sc which is es mod h square plus sn okay the arithmetic mean of this so let me write the es also on top so that it becomes a nice expression okay so that's the minimum mean square error okay so as long as you are forced to do linear equalizer in this form in this structure this is the best d for minimizing your mean square error you can't do anything better than this okay so assuming this is what you are allowed to do the only thing you are allowed to do is do a linear filter on zk what is the minimum mean square error i can get okay so remember this mean square error now has two components previously when we did zero forcing right if you look at this expression okay when we did zero forcing what happened to the mean square error 
the first term became 0 and 0, zero forcing what was the choice for d 1 by h okay right the first term became 0 and the second term contributed to the mean square error so as we did the analysis it's clear that that may not be the optimal choice for d for minimizing the total mean square error okay if you think isi is more evil than noise then you might want to pick zero forcing okay but in the way you're signaling if it doesn't matter whether isa or noise the only thing that matters is the error terms the magnitude of the error terms in my input to the slicer then you might want to minimize the total sum why would you just think of isa any different from noise right so if it's the same then the total sum needs to be minimized if the total sum needs to be minimized then doing zero forcing is not the optimal choice okay so if you notice here the filter is slightly strange right strange or not yeah it is strange right so es h star divided by es mod h squared plus sn but it's a filter right so it defines a frequency response if it's rational if all these cases are rational it once again gives you a rational z transform right so it's it's all rational and nice so it's no problem okay so that's the that's the choice right sorry you did the expression you got an answer there's no nothing more to say beyond that okay so that's the that's the simple uh, question okay so let me look at these things closely and make a few more comments about uh, stability and all these things okay so the remarks are quite important okay so let me just copy this and paste it into the next one Okay, so there you go. That's my uh, that's my uh, MMSC LE, if you will. Okay, so you'll see there'll be the moment you do something like this, there'll be a sea of acronyms. Okay, so you need to be comfortable with all these things. MMSC LE, minimum mean square error linear equalizer, is this expression. Okay, so remember what your H was. H had several terms, right? It had H zero. Then it had h min, then it had h max, then it had h zero. Okay, so basically you had zeros and poles inside the unit circle, zeros and zeros on the unit circle, and zeros outside the unit circle. Right. So those were assumptions. In my h max, I said it has to be FIR, and for a practical case, it can't be IIR. And h zero also, I said practical filters are stable, realizable filters are stable, so it cannot have poles. Okay. So those were reasonable assumptions to make on h of z. Okay, so we notice while the zero forcing linear equalizer depended only on H, the MMSE depends on several other things. It depends on the energy of your signal. Okay, it depends on the energy in noise. Okay, so if you if you can't estimate those or if you don't want to estimate those, then the MMSE is clearly not implementable. Okay, so if you want to implement MMSE, you have to be you have to have a clear idea of what this ES is, what this SNS and all that. Okay, so that's some added complexity in the MMSC, but in effect, it gives you a finally it gives you a better mean square error. So maybe that's good for you. Okay. So so a few more comments about implementation. Okay, so if you want to implement this, how how do you how do you go about implementing it? Okay, so a few remarks. You can do a cascade, right? Okay, so that seems like a nice way of implementing D. Okay, so you take ZK, first filter with H star. Okay, this is actually you're saying this is what? This is a filter match to H of Z. Okay, so it's it's a match filter. Match to H of Z, right? H star of 1 by Z star. And then you do your other filter. Okay, you do this filter and you get your XK. Okay, so this might be a way of implementing it. Okay, so this guy, okay, is it a problem doing H star? Okay, is it a problem or not? No problem. Suppose you have poles inside the unit circle, 
in h it can happen right what will happen to h star h star of 1 by z star right so this is a match filter okay so what will happen to the poles well, if you have zeros I'm sorry poles and zeros you're going to go outside the unit circle so it becomes a problem okay so in general you can't handle right poles outside the unit circle in h star of 1 by z star okay so if it has poles outside the unit circle then you have problems What is h star of z? h star of z makes no sense. So whenever you do h star, it becomes h star of one by z star. No? So when I write, when I write, see when I is that clear or not? Okay. It has to become h star of one by z star. There's no h star of z. What's the confusion here? You're asking me what this h star is. If I write in terms of z, it will become h star of one by z star. So it works. See, in in your uh, in if you are restricting to the unit circle, what is z and one by z star? It make no difference, right? But outside you have to write it as h star one by z star. No, that's the match filter. That's how you write it. Clear or not? What is the confusion here? If you write a symbol a signal h k convolved with h star of minus k, you get mod h square, right? So the h star of minus k when z transform becomes h star of one by z star. So whenever you, whenever I write h star, if I write, if I'm thinking about z, I have to make it one by z star. Only then there is a realistic meaning with the signal that I have. Okay. Of course, if you're restricting the unit circle, it makes no difference. Okay. So, so what happens because you're doing match filtering is poles inside might go off to poles outside, and that may that might make your filter IAR anti-causal, and that's a problem. Okay. So this is a bit of a problem. The match filter can be a problem if you have poles inside the unit circle. Okay. So maybe you can approximate it. Maybe you can implement it. Okay. So, but this guy is okay, right? Okay. So, if you look at on unit circle, there's no problem, right? It's all non-negative, real, and positive, and all that. Uh, but then, of course, if there are poles in the denominator, then there is a problem. They can, they can be poles, and if it's outside the unit circle, once again, there can be problems. But those, but it's in general, it's not too bad. But definitely, this will be stable. There's no problem with stability here, right? On the unit circle, you, it cannot go to zero. Why is that? It's all positive, okay? So it cannot go to zero. Sn is not going to go to zero. All this is not going to happen. So on the unit circle, it's going to work, okay? So that's a quick word about implementation. The match filtering is a problem in in case you have poles. Then there might be a problem with things becoming anti-causal IAR. But in general, it's it's okay. Okay, so it's not as bad as one by h, for instance. Okay, so that's that's the first uh, that's the first story. Okay, so not as bad as. Let me just put it that way. Okay, so one by h becomes really bad. This is okay. This can be done. See, for instance, one by h cannot be done if you have zeros outside the unit circle. So here, zeros outside the unit circle won't trouble you too much. Okay, so things like that are. Are okay here. Okay, so the next thing is, <coughs> what happens when S n tends to zero? When S n tends to zero, what happens? Yeah, M M S C becomes zero forcing. Okay, so M M S C tends to zero forcing. Of course, when you don't have any noise, you don't have to worry about noise enhancement. Okay, so just filter with one by H, you get. It. So the first part, the noise part goes to zero. So you don't have to worry about. It. Only have to kick the ISI part to zero. Okay, so that's the model of the story. Okay, so this is the ideal MMSC linear equalizer. It still has trouble with implementation aspects. Things can become IAR anti-causal if there are poles inside and outside. So it's it's a bit of a problem. It's not really a solved issue, but still it's better than the zero forcing linear equalizer in many cases. Okay. Okay, so one one thing to specialize to is the minimum phase channel. Okay, so here's a special case. It's when h of z is 
the m of z we had before being monic and minimum phase okay so in this case we only saw the zero forcing dfe before okay so now we zero forcing linear equalizer before i'm sorry now we are going to see the we saw we saw two equalizers for this case right we saw the zero forcing linear equalizer and the zero forcing dfe so now we are going to see the mmse df mmse linear equalizer for this case okay so in this case what happens okay so in the next case we'll consider is uh, i mean the noise spectral density being just n not by gamma square okay so basically white okay so so what what's happening is we're going to the previous case okay so you have mz here and then noise gets added which is white okay what happens to the linear equalizer the mmse linear equalizer in this case is the question okay so d is what es times h star which is in this case m star divided by es times mod m squared plus n not by gamma squared okay so another way to write this is m star by mod m squared plus n not by es gamma squared okay so there's really no change here i've just rewritten the same thing except that sn became n not by gamma square so this is the d that you might want to put okay and then you have the slicer right so the important thing is this is not 1 by m okay so in the zero forcing linear case this was 1 by m this is what now m star by mod m squared plus n not by es gamma square so that's this a bit of a problem here okay so maybe it's not uh, uh well problem in the sense maybe it's not as simple as what we had okay so it's not 1 by m right so it's not as simple as implementing 1 by m you have m star okay which might have poles outside the unit circle okay so you might have to worry about the implementation okay have a match filtering so it's not as simple as 1 by m but maybe maybe it will give you a lesser mean square error okay so what is the mmsc okay so it's the arithmetic mean of es times sn which is n not by gamma square divided by es times mod m square plus n not by gamma square so this is the mean square error this is just i'm just substituting it into the formula okay so i'm not doing anything great here just putting it there so if you play around a little bit you will get that this expression becomes n not by gamma mod m squared plus n not by yes the arithmetic mean of this okay so this was our this is our mean squared error exactly the same as before nothing different so i want i want to compare this with the zero forcing linear equalizer for the zero forcing linear equalizer what becomes the mean square error okay we did not we, we calculated something called the figure of merit the figure of merit also involved some computation like this if you if you go through and do the calculation carefully you will see this will work out to n not by gamma mod m square the arithmetic mean of this okay so you can go through and do this Let's see that okay so which of these two guys will be larger the zero forcing has to be larger right so look at what we are doing there the denominator we are adding a an additional term okay so the arithmetic mean is definitely going to be lower for the mmse linear equalizer as opposed to the zero forcing linear equalizer but what did we pay the penalty we pay is your filter becomes more fancy even in the minimum phase case the filter becomes a little bit more difficult to implement you have m star and then maybe it's more fancy in the linear uh, the zero forcing case it was simply 1 by m and if i miss minimum phase you're not scared of 1 by m in any phase anyway okay so m star is a little bit more painful to deal with okay so but if you can afford to do that filtering then you get a lower mean square error okay so in that way mmse also turns out to be better but but in a with a pinch of salt okay so maybe the implementation is not that easy okay so that's 
that's the MMSC. Okay, so now we're going to move towards the DFE. Okay. Okay, so we're going to move towards this. Is, this is this is what we're going to do next. We're going to do DFE, both the zero forcing and the MMSE part of DFE. Okay, and the way I introduced the DFE the last time. Okay, how did I introduce the DFE? I did the 1 by z different 1 by m of z differently and simply pushed the slicer inside. Okay, I did not really go into great detail as to what's actually happening. Now that we are trying to minimize this mean square error and that's become a metric, one can do one can do better intuitive explanations for the DFE and what else it's doing. Okay, so that's what that's what I'm going to do now to motivate the DFE a little bit more from a fundamental from an MSC point of view as opposed to just moving the slicer here and there and all that. Okay, so let's look once again. At what our what the linear equalizer was doing. Okay, so the linear equalizer is taking S K. Okay, so it's the same model as before. H of Z. Okay, you got Z K. We did some D of Z. X K. And it went directly to the slicer, right? to produce s hat k right this was the linear equalizer and the linear equalizer does not really process or attempt to process the signal separately by using the output of the slicer the philosophy of dfe is you want to use the output of the slicer and try to process the signal separately okay so that's the whole philosophy of the dfe and to motivate the msc point of view i'm going to do it slightly differently so if you look at ek this is what xk minus sk okay so ek is first of all the this uh, the main problem with ek is or one of the problems is it's non white okay okay well actually it's a problem and an opportunity okay ek happens to be non white okay and you previously we were just dealing with ek as it is and we found the power spectral density of it and worked with it okay so maybe you want to make the error white Okay. Okay. So that's the first question. So suppose you want, you, instead of making it non-white, you make it white. Okay. So if you can make the error white, then maybe there's a potential decrease possible in your mean square error, right? So maybe, so instead of integrating over some non-flat area, maybe if you make it flat, then the integral can go down. Okay. So that's 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 one philosophy. Okay. But for that, you need access to the error signal. Right? Nobody will give you access to the error signal. So how will, how will we generate error signals? Well, let things go through the slicer and subtract, etc. Okay, so that's the philosophy. So assuming you have access to E of k in some form in the receiver, <coughs> can you try to whiten E of k and then see if your mean square error is going down or not? Okay, so that's the philo that's another way of motivating decision feedback and doing equalizer that way. Okay, so how do you whiten E of k? Okay, so that's the that's the question, main question to ask. Can we whiten E k and will it decrease the MSC? Okay, so we'll try to whiten E k first and then ask the question of whether it decreases MSC next. Okay, so that seems to be the reasonable thing to do. So how do you how do you whiten E k? So let me write down the model for E k here. The way it actually happens is S k goes through H d minus one. Okay. nk goes through what simply d and then you add these two things you get ek right this is my ek okay so how do i whiten it's very easy to whiten actually right see so you do a spectral factorization on the power spectrum of ek if you do that you're going to get what some epsilon square which is the which is geometric mean of sc times me and me star okay so once again i'm not writing the the argument here so when i write me star what does it mean me star or 1 by z star okay so nothing else makes sense in this in this kind of factorizations okay so once i know that this power spectral density of ek can be factored like this how do you whiten it's a very obvious and simple way of whitening it do 1 by Okay, 
just do 1 by me okay so i'll come to this putting other constants in before simply do 1 by me right that's the most implementable most implementable whitening filter if you will okay just do 1 by me so previously we were doing all kinds of other things right we did 1 by gamma square m star and all that okay so we'll see why this 1 by me comes in okay so after this you're going to get e prime k okay so i'll call this as w w z okay so that's my 1 by me okay e prime k so here i know definitely this will be white and what will be the psd epsilon square okay epsilon square is going to be my psd okay right so so okay so it seems like maybe maybe one can whiten the error okay so it doesn't seem like a very difficult proposition so we can whiten the error okay if you have access to ek separately you can whiten the error there's no trouble there okay but will we have access to ek separately and how do you integrate it with the receiver is the question okay so i'm going to do that next and then we'll finally come back to the mean square error and we'll see actually in the mean square error also we get an advantage even if you do this whitening okay so we'll, we'll come back to that hold on hold on for a while i just want to make sure that i can do this within my receiver okay i have access to the ek separately and i can do this within my receiver okay so it's a, it's a little bit of a trick here it works it works in a very in a very uh, interesting way so i want to show you how this is going to work okay so let's look at sk going through h of z okay noise is coming in i get zk now at this zk level right i zk is what noise plus signal okay right if i want if i try to whiten something here what will happen whatever i do will happen both to the noise as well as to the signal i can't separate anything here okay but i'm going to go ahead and do it okay so i'm going to say i will do first this d of z okay right go back and if you look at it first this d of z then following it i'll do w of z okay so i'm going to instead of writing it as two separate filters i'll simply write it as one filter which is d of z times w of z okay so what has happened here in yk noise will be white okay so there's no problem noise will be white in yk and you can think of d of z times w of z as one filter if you want okay so it's not a big deal don't don't worry about uh, this thing has got psd uh, some sn of z you can think of this as one filter which whitens noise also so it's okay it's also a very valid way of looking at it but we'll come back and look at look at some other ways of doing this okay so i've i've somehow managed to whiten noise okay but what has happened my signal has gone through an extra w of z right i want my signal only to go through d of z right you go back and look at the structure before i want my signal only to go through d of z i don't want it to go through w of z i want only the noise to go through w of z okay somehow both of them have gone through the w of z okay so now i want to do what 1 by w of z to signal alone okay that's what i want to do but i know i can't have access to the signal alone so what would i what would what should i do to get access to the signal alone put a slicer okay so i'm going to put a slicer here okay i'm going to put a slicer here okay i'll come back and modify this there's a modification to be done here i'm going to put a slicer here and get an approximate version of the signal okay so now a nice way of implementing the 1 by w of z is what feedback w of z minus 1 from s hat minus s hat of k okay so that's a nice way so you just simply do this w of z minus 1 right from the output of the slicer back to what the input and that gives you the 1 by z you wanted on the signal alone without the noise okay anything anything that comes here okay i'm going to call this xk okay so let me just rewrite this with some room here okay so this is yk 
x k. So whatever noise that x k has is going to be knocked off by the slicer. Okay, and then the signal alone goes through my feedback filter. And as long as my signals are correct, all the extra signals that would come in y k will keep getting knocked off. Basically, one by w of z will be done properly. Okay, as long as it's it's coming back, there's no problem. Then x k will continue to be the proper signal that I want. Okay, so without too much of a problem. Okay, so that's the structure for the DFE. Okay, so this is exactly another way of deriving the DFE. So previously I just didn't do anything. I moved the slicer to the inside the feedback loop. Okay, so but now we have from filters before and after and all that. So it's a more complicated derivation. But this is the DFE structure. Okay. So the heart of the structure are these two ideas. The idea that you have to filter the, you have to whiten the noise, okay, to try and minimize the mean square error. Hopefully, maybe minimize the mean square error. And to whiten the noise, somehow you need access to the symbol and noise separately. Okay, so one way of getting access to the symbol is to bring the slicer into your processing so that you get access to the symbol and you do suitable feedback and you do it. Okay, so this is the derivation and a lot of terms here. So this filter overall is called the precursor filter, precursor equalizer in fact, it's called the precursor equalizer and this filter here is called the post cursor equalizer. Okay, so this structure is usually generalized, you know, I mean, so you, you pick some arbitrary filter here, some arbitrary filter here and try to optimize them to minimize something. Okay, say your probability of error, MSC or something. So those are generalizations of the DFE for other criteria. But the way we derived it, we wanted to have a linear filter first and then followed by whitening of the noise. So that gave us this way of deriving the DFE. Okay, so that's how, that's how we came to the derivation and uh, hopefully it's reasonably clear. Okay, so, 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 this is going to achieve noise whitening approximately. The reason why it's approximate is the decisions can be wrong. Okay, So it achieves accurate noise whitening whenever the decisions are right. Achieves noise whitening if SK is accurate. Okay, So that's a nice thing to see. Okay, It doesn't contribute anything else. Okay, so I think this is a good point to stop. I'll pick up from here in the next class. Uh, we'll try to we'll try to proceed with this in the next class.